Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about a little gem, and I'm not mashing my word, I do believe it's a little gem of a distro called Pika OS. Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. First, I want to try to define a little bit what really Pika OS is. It's a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu with the know-how from the Nobara, uh, I would say like team members, some of them, to create a Linux distribution, which is going to be really oriented toward gaming and content creation. But it's a little bit more of that on top of it, because what I've learned by installing it live with you guys, I'm going to put a link in the description below of my uh, live broadcast of the installation of this distro on my main PC is that the ease of use is also there. So you really have a vision of a distro which make it like accessible, but also really focus on performance, gaming, uh, content creation, and all those uh, little like details that kind of make me like really leaning toward the, their vision. So I'm going to go deeper into that after with some example, but I want you to have the, the whole idea here. So let me get right into it. I'm going to show you what really makes this distro totally different from all the other like Ubuntu Debian based distro I've tried so far. So first things first, this is Pika OS running on my PC. I'm going to show you, in my opinion, like the best of the best when it comes to application and ease of use and accessibility. They have what they call the Pika OS hub. This little hub is going to launch just right after you install the actual distribution. If you go there, you have a little welcome message and it looks a lot like Nobara because I do believe like they are the same dev developing this app here. It's, it's not a, a Nobara knockoff. They literally help doing Nobara for, for some of those special applications. And when you go down, you're going to have a little like menu with accessibility of a lot of applications. So obviously you have the updating the system. If you click here, it's going to update the system. You have all the install patented media codecs and library. You just click there and it's going to install them, which is pretty awesome. But there is my favorite here, my favorite by far, which is called the Open Driver Manager. If you click here, it's going to open what they call the Pika OS Driver Manager. And this, my friend, is what I've been dreaming for since I switched to Linux desktop with my NVIDIA card. But I think even for an AMD card, this is just awesome. So let me show you. Here, you have the opportunity to switch on the go to whatever driver you like. They are all here. So you have the stable here, 545. You have the production and you also have the beta. And if you want to go deeper, you have the old one, the 525 here. I, I wouldn't recommend them, but you can even go like behind in terms of like driver. Now, what is it so cool? You click on this button and it's going to install it right away. You reboot. You don't have any black screen. You have nothing. And I don't know if you remember, but what really blocked me with Ubuntu and Debian was their really poor management of the driver. This is included with a GUI. Dude. So you don't need to do anything, you just click. And this is where I believe like the ease of accessibility is here. Now they go even further. They also propose Mesa Git, Mesa Stable, and Mesa Hybrid. Yes, with one click, dude. So this is awesome. And I think it kind of show the level of dedication of the dev. So that's, that's the first one. Now we're going to continue within uh, the little like hub here and you have all these options you can install ProtonG, you can install more apps for the software manager web apps uh, the proprietary driver from amd you can do whatever you want here now look at this this one is is actually super nice you have the pika os game utilities and what it does here it's a meta package that installs steam lutris go overlay mangoed wine wine tricks vika basalt and many more. So here, if you are also using uh, based on Ubuntu and Debian, you can do that manually, of course, but it's going to be a pain, especially like for the Go Overlay and Mango Hut, because there is some bug and you need to go there and you need to, to spend time to make it work. There you click, it works. Nothing to do. You're going to ask yourself like, but why would it work here and not for like for example uh, Ubuntu? Well, they, I, I, I'm going to go further after, but 
they have their own package for everything that is proposed there. You will see. Like, I, I don't want to spoil it, but they literally reworked everything. And I do believe this is really, really good. So you have that. They have OBS Studio. I'm going to talk about it after again. And all those packages are native. It's not flat pack. It's not, it's all native. So this for me are really, really good point when it comes to having a simple application graphical that do all the heavy lifting for you when you install your operating driver. Now let's talk to another really important point and that's the way you can install application on this distro. And they have a totally, I would say like smooth way to manage container, flat pack, and, and actually way more than any other like Debian, Ubuntu uh, based distros I've seen. They created their own package manager called Pikman. So I'm going to show you real quick what you can do with it. But I, I do think this is awesome. So let me explain. This operating system comes with APX installed by default. So if you don't know what APX is, it's a wrapper of distro box that creates container where you can install and manage your application. So yes, I, I did read that. Sorry about that. I, I didn't want to make a mistake, but <laughs> you got the idea. You can install container on the go and they created their own package manager, Pikman, to manage this. And I'm telling you, this is awesome. So I made some tests, but let's say you are a developer. Let's say you want to install an application real quick. You can use all the Arch package, all the AUR package, all the Fedora, all the Alpine package, all the Flatpak package by just using Pikman. And this is a real, real good approach. I really like the ID. I like Pikman. I'm a big fan of it. And here we come back again about this ease of use and this, I would say, like complexity behind the ease of use. I, I really like that. This is just awesome, in my opinion. And because we are talking about package manager, I just want to make clear that the base of Ubuntu is here, but you have any of the crap related to SnapG. So some of you guys might love SnapG for whatever reason, but I did a, a full review of Ubuntu less than six months ago, and I can tell you that SnapG is kind of a mess. At least when I tested it, maybe they they made it better, but I really like the approach that they got rid of all the, I would say like waste related to Ubuntu and they started fresh with their own package manager and their own way to manage a container within the operating system. For me, it's a big, big plus. So again, PicaOS, that's a good one. Now let's talk about the vision. And I think the vision is what really makes this distribution different. They kind of like created what I always dreamed of when I was thinking about Ubuntu and Debian for my Linux desktop like operating system. And it's more, you know, I never really dreamed of Ubuntu to be fair, but their vision is really about giving an rolling edge type of distribution with all the tweak that will make the user experience seamless. And I know I've repeated that in the to first point, but you really need to understand like what it means. So when I installed it and I was live on my stream, the main Dave of the distribution came to my chat and we start to discuss, right? For the content creator, one of the key applications are going to use is OBS and OBS can be a real mess. I know you can install it for Flatpak, etc., etc., but Flatpak is not the best. There is limitation related to Flatpak. It kind of like increase the complexity of everything using Flatpak. I know some of you guys are going to be, yes, but in my use, blah, 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 which I respect. But for my use, with my OBS, the way I work, I can guarantee you that it's not the best option. It's, it's just a headache sometimes. So here, what they have done is they came up with OBS modified at a level I, I couldn't believe when I started. Because when I launched it, I was like, hey, guys, you are like six months behind in terms of release. And I say, why is that? Like, are you not supposed to be a rolling edge distro? And the main dev told me why. They are really caring about the stability of the system. They notice that some of the features related to OBS, they were not there, especially for the NVIDIA card. 
So I was like, okay, but w what do you really bring on the table? And I start to look at all the packages installed within this OBS. And look at this, guys. Out of the box, you're going to have the browser plugin installed, which is, which is a good thing. Then you're going to have like this Pipewire plugin already set up for you. Series on the cake. You're going to have game capture ready out of the box. For the people who don't know, setting that on Linux is not easy. You can do it, obviously. But having it like just deserve like that on a plate is just awesome. And this is where the vision push you, right? They still want to keep this ease of access and give you like this, you know, seamless experience. But they want you not to have all the headaches related to the complexity of setting everything up. And this is great. So I had the same reflection with the version of Papwire. And if we look at it together, you're going to see that the Papwire version is actually pretty old. This is the trick. They made sure that they kept this version to have everything working all together. So you might sacrifice a little bit of like rolling edge type of approach. Like those packages are not that old. But you're going to have on the other hand a solid, solid experience. And this, I, I think it's, it's a really nice feature. But then what I've done, I look at the kernel and the kernel is also pretty old. It's a 6.6 uh, version of a kernel. I know they have an optimized kernel out of the box made by the team of Cache OS. So in terms of kernel, you're going to be at the level of a TKG. You're going to be at the level of a Cache OS. You're going to be with a good kernel. The only issue, again, and this is where we're going to start to talk about the negative related to the distro, is the fact that the kernel is a little bit older. And when I asked the dev, I was like, why is it old? He told me that there is some issue related to uh, VRR with AMD with the newest kernel. So for you guys to have still the best experience with VRR with the AMD card, they decided to, to stay on 6.6.6. .6. But when it comes to performance and especially in gaming, I noticed that the performance was not as high as what you would have with a rolling edge. But keep in mind that this is part of their vision, right? They want to give you this experience, which is like seamless. And, you know, rolling edge, there is some days where it might break. And that's, that's a part of being a rolling edge. But here you are just in the middle. You are not that old in terms of like packages age. But you have to, you know, give up a little bit of performance. Let's talk about another negative point. Because they have like so much work right now, and I'm going to talk more about it in the, in the rest of the video, you need to understand that you might have issue while installing the distro right off the bat. And this is what happened to me when I was installing the distro. I had issue uh, related to the upgrade. So I fixed it. It was not that hard. But you need to have, like I guess, like some basic knowledge to use this distro at the state it is right now. I believe like their team is pretty small and their vision required a lot of work. Like when I say a lot of work, just, just to give you an idea, they have their own repo. Like they don't download any packages from Ubuntu. All the packages, they come directly from the Pika repo. So this distro is not what you will find normally, which is a lot of optimization based on the repo of a big, big over distro that kind of like push uh, new packages on a daily basis. No, no, no. Here, they literally forked everything and control everything to give you this experience. But I do believe it comes with a price. And this price is the fact that their team might be, I believe, a little bit under the weather when it comes to uh, push all those uh, different you know, new ISO to solve the issue related to the install and the upgrade. In my test, because obviously, like, I had this issue, I solved it, and then I had another little issue for installing a specific packet. I went to their Discord, and I opened a ticket. And in this ticket, I had it solved in less than 24 hours. So it kind of shows, you know, the idea of small is beautiful. They, they will come and help you if they can, obviously. Don't have expectation, like don't 
expect them to resolve your issue in one hour, obviously. But what I can tell is like, in my experience, they were able to fix it and it, it, it was great. So the issue related to the install is going to be fixed in the next ISOs are going to push soon. But the dev told me they have a lot, lot of work right now because in top of the work I mentioned before, I do believe like right now, the next release of PKOS, the release number four, because we're using the number three right now, is going to be a drastic change in the way the distro is actually set up. So let me explain. Right now, they are using a Ubuntu base, but in the future, they're going to be using a Debian seed base plus experimental plus all the different you know packages they're gonna have on their github so they are changing the model right now and the dev told me during the stream that uh, one of the other dev participating to this project was moving in and out and that's why they were kind of like under the weather right now and it kind of sucks because i, I did want to try this distro at this time and i feel like i did try it not at the most like optimized time to really reward their job. But I do believe that when they release Pika OS 4, and we're going to have a follow-up video on that. But what I can tell you is that their vision and the work they are putting into this distro is just phenomenal. My take right now, as it is, is that this distro is more in like a beta type of phase. They are still they kind of like searching themselves and try to put like a work process where the distro is going to be really more like, I will, I will say like um, easily to manage for them. And it's going to give, I would say an experience which is a little bit more up to date for the user. But as it is right now, like I, and the vision, if they reach their goal, I think it could be one of the best distro out there. Like I'm, I'm not even kidding. Because you're going to have like the base of a solid Debian and the flexibility that the team kind of deliver already. Like they already deliver it, for example, like switching the driver and the maintenance where all the little details like in OBS and uh, the choice of packages and all the little like tweaks they put within the distro. Man, this, this could be a bomb. I'm not even kidding. Because even if you are not super rolling edge, you're going to be at a stable level that is worth lose a little bit of gaming performance to have like this all-in-one distro uh, for the gamer and content creator. Guys, I hope I didn't give you too much of a headache with this conclusion. Okay, if I give you a headache, please give a thumbs up <laughs> to this video. Okay, if I did not give you a headache, please give a thumbs up and leave a comment. Okay, and... Uh, uh, subscribe to and, and rewatch the video or rewatch all the other videos I made. Like, please support the channel any way you can. Uh, if you want to support the channel financially, I have a Patreon and a YouTube membership, so you can do that too. But yes, like this was a really good surprise. And I do believe that this distro is a little gem that need polish. And the polish is going to come on one hand from, you know, the dev side, but also from you guys. I will really like uh, invite you to try it for yourself when they release like the, the next ISO. I wouldn't recommend this ISO right now because you, you might encounter a little bit of problem. Uh, if you want to solve it, just go watch my uh, full live broadcast because I solved it live. It was not hard, but just to mention it, go to their Discord and kind of exchange about the distro, give your feedback, try to help because I know a lot of you guys might have the you know, developer ability, which, which I don't, unfortunately, but you could help make this distro like push to another level. And the more users they're going to have, and that's my belief, the easier for them is going to be to, you know, like polish this little gem of uh, Pika OS. Guys, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous.